Hello, everyone. Welcome back to TMP Limitless 7. So I'm going to be getting into mechanism. So to get mechanism started, I'm going to have to start automating um, the alloys. It's like the ultimate basic and advanced alloys um, right here. And then you I think you send them back through to uh, is it the metallurgic infuser? So you use the metallurgic infuser to make the infused alloys. Or I guess there's different reinforced and atomic and then i guess you send it back in and make the uh the basic control circuits well just the control circuits in general goodness grace gracious i am having a stroke anyways so i'm gonna get that started and then uh the evaporation stuff evaporation towers those things are going to be a problem with how tall they can be. So if I want to make it underneath, I'm going to have to drop this down quite a ways. So yeah, I'm going to hurry and do that. I'll get a room kind of built. I don't know what color scheme I'm going to do, but I'll figure it out. And then I'll get those uh, alloys and the circuits started with the, uh, the metallurgic infusers. And then I will uh, I'll go on from there probably to make the evaporation towers, but we'll just cross that bridge when we get there. Okay, I'm gonna hurry and test out real quick before I, I just made a realization. These thermal evaporation towers, you can use, so there's like a heater in mechanism you can make and attach to this to increase the heat so that it increases its output of, um, you know, evaporated water or whatever. They make multiple different uh, materials. Um, so I'm going to test to see if it even works underground at all. I would assume if you have a heater attached to it, it would. So I'll just make a small one and then make a heater. I'll just put like right here. Um, see if it, because if it works the heater, then it's like, okay, that's good. I can just do what I was planning on doing down there, just building it all underground. But if that doesn't work, well, then I'm going to have to figure something else out, like maybe push this up and then build it up above my house and just right above the evaporation towers i can just make a hole so but i, I highly doubt it wouldn't work with a heater you know that just it wouldn't make sense because you're still giving it the heat so i would it being underground not work so i'll hurry and test it out and then see if i need to change course from my original plan so it does work so making a wee bit of brine by heating up this with a heater. So that makes me happy. So I will just follow the original plan of uh, building it underground. All right, it's been a little bit. I got mechanism done. I didn't really know what colors to do. So I just kind of started throwing stuff together. I, for some reason, I saw the bronze block and was like, eh, I'll try to do something with that. And then... I was like, hey, I wonder if red looks good and it, it looks fine. It's not like the best, but whatever. So I started just throwing stuff together and this is what I got. And I mean, it's it's too late to go back now. So, you know, but um, over here I have the metallurgic infusers set up making the alloys. Um, and then I have uh, wherever it is, one of them making the basic control circuit. Um this is the only one that needs to be in one of these infusers. And then the rest, you're just making the crafting table um, with the alloys. So that is super nice. So now I also have these holes, as you can see, for the evaporation towers. Um, I don't need this many at all, honestly, because... The only thing the evaporation towers make is brine and then lithium, which I don't think I'm going to need any of that at all, but whatever. I honestly, I wasn't really thinking of like, if I need it when I was building it, if I thought of that, I would have only had these four and then not made pretty much this whole hallway kind of like meant for it. Cause I was thinking for some reason, like, well, I might like for some reason need a ton. So I'd, also made it to where the hallway, you know, isn't finished, obviously. So I could just add more if I needed to. Yeah, so I'll just build these four and then just leave this, these four, because, I mean, I, I won't need more. 
then four evaporation blocks or blocks towers after that i'll probably have to start making uh fissile fuel for the fission reactor to make nuclear waste but for now i'll just get these four done real quick and then move on from there all right so i got the uh the thermal towers all built well just the four of them um i just have the uh the brine pumping straight into these drawers and it's a crank and i have them i have them built up all four of them actually I have them all built up to the tallest they can go which is this tall i thought it was taller than this i'm gonna be honest like i thought it was way taller than that so i don't know i didn't really need to come down this far but whatever um but yeah so when i at some point if i need lithium because i think that's really the only thing that brine makes let's look at this so i can make gaseous brine or i can make chlorine and sodium so i mean yeah i'll just have like right now i have eh, about like a million buckets of brine so it's that are pumping every time i reload my game though it like this pipe stops working so i don't know what that is but yeah it's kind of weird um but and then in here i've started building the casing for the fission reactor um and that's what i'm gonna start doing right now is making the fissile fuel which takes a ton of different gases and liquids whatever it is to make so if we come in here and look at this so we need to make uranium hexafluoride and that'll turn straight into fissile fuel to one for one so that's pretty good we need to make the isotopic centrifuge whatever um to make this you need uranium oxide which is super easy you just take a yellow uranium cake and slam into the chemical oxidizer and to make this you just get the enrichment chamber and you use or you put the uranium ingots into it super super easy to get that but then you need hydrofluoric acid which you need fluorite which i have a ton of that i think i might even be growing that and then you need sulfuric acid which to make that you need water vapor which is super easy to make um and then sulfur trioxide which you need sulfur dioxide and oxygen which is also super easy to make you just put water and you'll get hydrogen and oxygen and then the sulfur dioxide is also super easy you just put sulfur dust into the uh, chemical oxidizer and you get sulfur oxide or dioxide and i have i think like a i started making some dust i think i have close to a million uh yeah i have over a million 1.1 so that'll be super easy to do and what i mean by easy is i have the ability to make it all it's just having to actually build the machine to do it it's not going to be that easy but you know who cares yeah i think i'm going to build the fissile fuel like production i guess you could say back here just in case if i want to for some reason make the fusion reactor over here which if i do that it's going to be just completely for fun but yeah i'll build it back here i should probably make some quantum entangle porters <laughs> i think that's how you pronounce it yeah quantum entangle porter it just it it's amazing it can hold items gas liquids anything and it uh it kind of acts like an ender chest but i don't think you can actually access its inventory like if i put one down and have water going into it i can go to any dimension and put it down and connect it to the same channel and it'll have the water so you can have like 30 of them all with different channels but have them going to different places it's super nice so I will make a ton of those and then I'll get started on making the freaking fissile fuel assembly line. All right, I got the my fissile fuel production up and going finally. So yeah, it's it's super tedious. So I just have like the machines making like like the trioxide and I have it going straight into this one to make the sulfuric acid and I have that going straight into this one to make the hydrofluoric acid and then going straight into this to make the uranium hexafluoride. And then that's going straight into this to make the fissile fuel. And then over here, these are just like, so these two are making the uranium oxide. And even then I'm still like this, like I'm still draining my uranium oxide. My hydrofluoric acid seems to be like, like I'm sure if I added one more 
just even one more of these uh, chemical oxidizers, I probably would start getting behind on my hydrofluoric acid. And then this is to make the actual, um, uh, what is it, the sulfur dioxide. And then this is to make the vapor. And then this is to make the uranium cakes, which then feeds that, which I have two of the maxed out factories with this. And it's like one of these is feeding both of those right now and not even the whole thing. So it's, it's doing pretty good. Um, and then I have my fissile fuel coming down here. So there's not really like... Unless it's it changed, you can't put the gases in a drawer. So I can't just like slam a drawer down right here and have it going in there with a ton of upgrades. So I could hold, you know, what is it like 2.1 million buckets or something like that. I'm sure there's a better way to do this. Um, but I just have a ton of these chemical tanks down here. I have it just piped into these. Luckily, the tubes also act as a massive storage thing. Um... So like down here, like I have uh, 5.9, pretty much 60 buckets worth of fissile fuel just in like this pipe down here, essentially. But it's I pretty much just made a massive tank with this. And then when I want to use the fissile fuel, these are already um, it's all piped in to where I can just add a pipe and I take it straight up to my fission reactor. So, um, and I'm going to wait a little bit before I actually turn on the fission reactor so that I have a ton of fizzle fuel. Because what I want to do is I want to make it to where I can have enough fizzle fuel where I don't have to, like, wait again to, like, build up a ton. Gosh, I just slapped my mic. I don't want to have to wait again to build up some more fuel. Ooh, maybe the the bin no never mind but um i don't want to yeah i don't want to wait to build up the fuel again the only reason why i'm doing this is so i can make the radioactive waste but yeah so i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna afk overnight but i mean i might build this up before that but yeah pretty much i'm just gonna, I'm gonna afk get a ton of that up and then i'm gonna build the reactor and then start it up and get some uh radioactive waste and then hopefully be able to move on to making the antimatter pellet as fast as possible. Because once I get that down, then I won't ever have to use this fission reactor again. Because I'll just be able to have a wasted radioactive bee. So, yeah, I'll hurry and get this all um, built up. And then get a ton of the fissile fuel all saved up. And then start it up and see how it goes. Alright, so I got the, uh, the fission reactor all... Uh, Fully built, it's fully fueled. I've actually, I've gotten a ton of fuel. Like, I had built this down here, and it's, I think it's probably like, like this stuff down here is probably like a third of the way full. Yeah, it's getting full. I have so much fissile fuel. And then I also got this room done. Yeah, the, the like red and like bronzish coloring, it's definitely kind of overbearing, but whatever. I'll just stick with it now. But, so the next thing I need to do is I need to make the, uh, it's like SP something materials stuff. This white stuff right here. HDPE. Wasn't even close. Um, so I need to make the pellet so that I can make the sheet. Or maybe the rod. Wait. No. Yeah. So I need to make the sheet, which I then use to make the, uh, the solar neutron activator, which I need this to make the polonium um the nuclear waste is how you make the plutonium and the polonium out of the centrifuge or the neutron activator which this gives off a lot of nuclear waste so that's pretty good like i got 19 buckets of nuclear waste in like the probably 10 seconds i was running it so yeah i'm gonna come in here i'm gonna finish this up well what i'm just gonna do is i'm gonna build the wall out to here and then just in case if I want to extend it out, I'm not going to finish a wall uh, up against this. But I'm going to be building the HDPE. I don't know what that stands I actually do want to know what that stands for. Let me hurry and see if I can figure that out. I don't know. It doesn't say what HDPE. I wonder if it's like high density plastic something. I don't know. Something random like that. Anyway, so I'm going to have the process of making this just like right here. 
So what you do to make it is you need to make liquid ethylene and oxygen. Oxygen's pretty easy. And then the substrate, you put that into the pressurized reaction chamber and you get the HDPE. But to make the ethylene, you need you need biofuel and then water and hydrogen. And then you get the ethylene and the substrate. So that's easy. But then you have to make biofuel, which this is super easy. You just put like any organic stuff into the crusher and there's a crushing factory. So I'll be able to make just billions of freaking biofuel won't be won't even be funny so that'll be that'll be super nice but yeah so i'll get the the process started i'm making this this hdpe stuff and then i'll bring that over and start making the polonium and plutonium and then move on from there all right so i've got the my whole thing set up to start making these hdpe things um I think all I need to do is actually place this right there. Yeah. Now I'm making them. I'm making them so freaking fast. I need to speed you up. There we go. All right. So yeah, now I'm making a frick ton of those. And now all I need to do is go slam it into an enrichment chamber and make the sheets, which I guess I'll just build that like right here. Nice. I got to spit it out to the left cool all right now I'm making those sheets I don't know what the rods make so let's see pigment mixer is that it shift n for details service machine capable of mixing two pigments together to bear up there's a new one okay so not really worth it really the sheets are the only thing that's really worth it they actually make a lot which I mean most of it's like the ooh. Oh, it's a solar panel. Well, this is what I'm looking for, the solar neutron activator. So now that I have those HDPE uh, sheets, I can now make that solar neutron activator. And then I'll be able to turn this thing on and make pl polonium and uh, plutonium. All right, so I put these down. Um, I forgot, you kind of have to have this thing be underneath like actually have the sky above it so i just kind of just dug straight up um but i placed it right here and then it filled up and i forgot that when you break them when they're full of nuclear waste it spills it and then causes like pretty much just like a radiation spill whatever the freaking nuclear disaster thing i don't know what the actual wording is but so yeah now i have to wear this hazmat suit down here and i spill a lot like i spilled this much like 10 was that 10 buckets so it's yeah it's quite a bit I don't know how long that's I don't know how you can like detect like you can make like a Geiger counter for the mech suit but I don't, can you actually just make a Geiger counter well you can okay let me do that I have to me do that okay so time to decay seven hours it's gonna take seven hours for it to clear up so I mean I'm just gonna afk tonight so that'll be that'll be good actually I do want to check because I was up at the top of my base all the way up here. No, nothing. But yeah, so I got these two. Um, they're not going, but they're built and ready to go. Do you already have the upgrades in you? You do not. You need to put upgrades in you. So these make this stuff pretty fast. Like this solar neutron activator makes the polonium really freaking fast. So, I mean, I might slap like a second one right next to it, maybe. Um, and then, but this guy makes it decently quick. So now I gotta take both of these and turn them into the pellets. So um, I should probably just look to see how much plutonium I need. And then I won't have to worry about like making, uh, what is it, too much? It's not really like a big deal if I make too much, but I just, I just don't wanna have to make too much. All right, so it looks like this is like the basic amount of stuff you need. So you need three ports. You need two at the least, because you need one to take out the... I don't know, you need three at the least, I mean, because you need to be able to put in the, polu the I think it's the polonium, and then you pull out the antimatter, and then you also need one to actually put in the energy, which is where the supercharged coil comes in. You can have four, because you can have two of these bad boys, and then I guess just 60 of the casing, and then 59 the reactor glass. Honestly, I'll probably just start making it until I have enough and then just stop making the pellets. 
because I need the liquid or the gas, I should say, of the polonium. So, oh man, apparently it's raining. Cool. So I'll hurry and get the the pellets crafting up, and then I'll go over somewhere over there and build that uh, super critical phase shapeshifter thingy. All right, so I've got these uh, things going. Um, I mean, I'm out of the uh, nuclear waste, but uh, this one still has some some going, I guess. Oh, I've also been making a lot of plutonium, holy crap. So my plutonium might actually be done. <laughs> holy crap. It was the plutonium that I didn't need much of. Yeah, I just needed one per one of these, and I only needed like 80 or something of these. So, I mean, 100 is fine. And I'm gonna have a lot more because I still have a ton. Um, I think it's every thousand millibucket, so pretty much a bucket makes one pellet. So I'll be, I'll get like another hundred. So that's that's good. So are you? I guess you'll be powered by that. Does it have to be day? It is currently day. But yeah, so if I activate this thing, I don't think I've actually showed this. So this, uh, I'm just is how like everything the that goes on with the fission reactor. So this is the heat. If it gets too high, it will explode. So that's never fun. Um, I don't really know like what's a good temperature. I usually try to get to 1200 Fahrenheit. So I mean, you go in here and this rate limit, 400 millibuckets per tick, you just come down here and you change it. So like I'll do like 450 and then I'll change it to 450. And then yeah, you can see the temperature only went up like 100 or 0.1. I guess yeah, 100 degrees. Fahrenheit so if I do so the max burn rate would be 1900 just based on how much whatever they're called the fuel rods I have built in there um so if I did 500 now yeah now I'm at 1200 so um that's like right in the middle of the temperature range which I don't know when it starts getting too dangerous but I think that's that's fine I don't know how much of this I need but I just need this one to build up and then I'll go over and build the super critical phase shape shifter thingy and then we'll be able to start making some freaking antimatter which will be freaking sick so all right so i built the freaking thing but mostly i need to make the um the coils still actually i think i have them i don't know why i haven't just placed them yet so you just put them in here like this um so you build this weird like kind of almost sphere ish shape um and then I need some more extra glass. So now, yeah, so now it is complete. So what you do is you put the polonium in and then you have to supply power to the back of these and then you'll start making antimatter. But I kind of want to like make a ton of antimatter. I want to see how much I can make all at once because I've never like supplied this with um, an insane amount of power all at once. So I want to get it ready to like... Like, I'm going to go get, uh, I might make another, uh, what is it, creative energy cell? Anyways, but yeah, I'll, I'll make a, I might make another creative energy cell, bring it down here. I'm, I'm actually, I might just yoink the one that's up there. Bring it down here, and then connect it to these, and then this. So, for some reason, I can't put polonium into the chemical tanks. One thing you can do is just place down more uh, tubes, and it increases the amount that it can hold, so... Um, this should be able to hold a ton of polonium, hopefully. But yeah, I'm going to let this build up with polonium. I mean, I'm not going to wait until it's full, but I'm going to wait a little bit and then I'll get this fired up. All right. Um, I got a decent amount of pol polonium, but I'm like, I just kind of want to get this uh, going. So... Um, I brought my energy cell. I have it still pumping stuff into uh, uh, Ender cell. Um, I have just all three of the different types of stuff. Not all three. There's probably more, but the three I know of. Just I don't know which one's faster. I know at least this one's the slowest, and then that one. I don't know if the uh, mechanism cable is faster than the power one, but. Let's hope it is. And then I have um, uh, have the mechanism ones piping through to the uh, the coils. So all I need to do is connect this, and it should start making stuff. So let's do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
sick. So what am I making? Making 0 0.131 millibuckets per tick, which actually is quite a lot compared to what I usually do, I think. I'm going to do some flanangling with uh, the pipes mod real quick. And uh, I'm going to hurry and just bump some stuff up. Just I just want to see, like, oh, oh, game is freezing. I just want to see how, like, the max this thing can go. So let me pull out the pipes. Is that at least the... I mean, I could probably actually do mechanism, maybe. Make a zombie. Edit. So, is that... Is that it? Eight... Was that? Eight million FE per tick? I'm assuming that's maybe what it is. So if I add just another zero. So now it's 81 million. Eh, let's do two zeros. Do apply. I probably have to reset. All right, so... Oh, GFE, yeah. So this is holding... It was something i don't know what the number was but it was mfe and now it's gfe so this is definitely gonna work so put this and i wouldn't be surprised if i'm gonna blow through all this instantly so i'm gonna have to be fast let's see 800 mf yeah two millibuckets per tick i think that's just the max that it can get that's insane how fast is that it's going down pretty quick that is yeah that's definitely yeah it's not even using all of it so so you can put 400 um, million FE per tick through each of these, so you can get 800. So that's, I mean, that's pretty sick. I pretty much am done. Like, I just need to make the pellet, and then I'll be done with this. Let me hurry and do that. Boom. One antimatter pellet. I have my volume turned down still. I forgot about that. Okay. Nice. But yeah, so now that we have this all done, I mean, that's pretty much it for mechanism. The uh, inventory system, or the storage system, I should say, the QIO drives. Don't really care to do that because I already have a really good system with refined storage. Um, yeah, and I think the, the next thing I'll do is getting into create, which I'll probably build down here as well. So I don't have to spend so much time trying to just build this. Like, honestly... It would have been so much easier just to build something stupid, but I was like, I need to build something that looks better than just black walls like I usually do. So, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.